Welcome to ISO 25. So today I'm going to be showing you how I like to emulate film and how to make your own custom uh, film emulation less in DaVinci Resolve. First off, I am not an expert. I'm not a professional colorist. It's just been uh, a couple years of messing around and experimenting um, and I've gotten a look that I'm pretty happy with and I feel like I've gained a reasonable knowledge of how to emulate film in a general sense. I think film has a really nice look um, that I believe can actually totally be emulated with digital. It just takes a little bit of finessing and a little bit of, uh, you know, editing to get there. And today I'm gonna to show you how I like to do that. So I'm first going to show you how I actually like to use my film LUT. Um, and then I'll go through and kind of teach you how to make one for yourself here. So essentially, just um, as some background, I am shooting on Sigma FP. I've got a kind of a variety of clips here, um, all taken from a vlog I made recently. Um, and it's really good when you're, when you're doing things like this to have a variety of clips, just so you can kind of see how it applies in different situations and in different scenarios. So um, I actually don't apply the LUT um, on a clip based level. I prefer to apply it on the timeline. It's just easier when I have the look kind of apply to every single clip at once instead of, you know, having to, you know, copy and paste and, and whatnot. And then I can just, you know, do individual edits on individual clips. Again, you'll be on the color edit page. Um, it'll automatically, you know, be clip. But if you come up here, click that section, hit timeline, there won't be a node there yet, but you can create one and it will, you just have to kind of connect the dots there. So I'll show you what I have built um, for my lot. So essentially I have kind of two things that I won't be talking about much in this video, but we have our halation and film grain, and these cannot be built into a lot. These are you know separate things that have to actually be applied as an effect later on. And then I have my LUT that I'm running it all through, which is, I just like to call it Portra V2 because I had a, an older version that I made and now I have this version. I, I look, I think it looks kind of like Portra, not really but I just like to call it that um, just to you know remember. So that is how I apply it. And then what I do is because um, I, you know, I can go through and then edit individual settings for individual clips. I'm editing in the raw tab because you know, I recorded in raw on the Sigma FP. If you didn't record in raw, you can just go back into the clip view and then, you know, adjust your settings like you would um, for, you know, any other clip. I really feel like I'm, I'm able to use it in a lot of different scenarios and kind of adjust for, you know, whatever uh, project I'm working on, but it is a very, you know, convenient thing to just have it built in right there. And then, you know, you can have your look just ready to go. How did I actually build this? So we're just gonna go back to the timeline. We're gonna reset the timeline here. Um, while we're building the LUT, I'm gonna stay on a clip. Um, so we'll start with this clip. I'll show you kind of the, the building blocks of, of this look. So I'll just apply this real quick. So these are the actual nodes that are going into that look, right? And I'll create an entirely new um, LUT in order to kind of show you what each of these things are doing. But this is essentially what the node tree will look like in the end here. It's not incredibly organized um, because it's kind of been a, a process of just refining until I, I got a look that I liked. But um, yeah, um, let's reset this. Okay, so you're going to start by creating in clip mode uh, seven nodes. For my camera specifically, it's the Sigma FP and the color space, as you can see down here, is Black Magic Design. And I found a LUT that I feel like applies really well, um, and that is Black Magic Design, Black Magic 4K Film to Extended Video version 4. Um, and this is just my starting point. But obviously, this is only going to work for a camera that has this color space and this gamma. So instead, we can actually use the color space transform. So a color space transform um, will allow us to kind of put in our camera details and then come out with whatever look we want. So we'll start with the output section. So first we're gonna hit Black Magic Design Film Gen 1, and then on output gamma, we'll hit, let's see, gamma 2.4. You can just put in the info for your specific camera in here. So it's obviously gonna vary. Um, for instance, if you're shooting an S-log, you're gonna hit on Sony S-gamma 3.cine and then you're gonna put in the color space as well. But, you know, me shooting a Sigma FP, that means my color space, or my gamma is gonna be Black Magic Design Film, and then my color space is gonna be Black Magic Design Film Gen 1. But you notice these two do match, but that's all right, that's just because this is the, the color space I'm wanting to go into, and my camera happens to be that color space as is, but 
if your camera is something different, it's fine if these don't match. That's just, you know, it's not a concern. Now, this is our starting point. So you see it's uh, still pretty muted. Um, it's, you know, there's not a whole lot going on, um, but what it is giving us is a pretty good starting point with lots of dynamic range in the highlights and shadows that will allow us to then apply our film look later on. So film at its core has just a few things different from a traditional video look. There's kind of, I, I'd say three noticeable characteristics um, that will help us in, in creating a, a film look. So the first is gonna be the contrast curve. So in a traditional kind of, I guess, stereotypical film look, we're gonna have a pretty standard kind of S curve, right? So we're gonna have our S curve and then we're also gonna have slightly lifted shadows. So nothing will ever reach total black. It'll just be kind of like a nice gray somewhere around there. And then highlights are also going to be brought down a little bit. Nothing will ever reach total white. So you can see what's actually happening on my waveforms over here. Um, but something around there, right? So we're adding some contrast. But at the same time, we're also pulling up the shadows just a, a hint. And then we're pulling down the highlights just a little bit. And then we're going to label that contrast curve. I can't type. All right. And then next, we're going to go to this final node here. And we're actually going to label this first. We're going to do color curve. So the next thing that is pretty typical of film is that the highlights and shadows will be tinted in one way or another. And now which way they're tinted is kind of going to depend on the, the film stock and, and things like that. So you're going to have to kind of decide exactly how things will go for this. The way I personally came up with the look is I, I, actually, I used to use the Kodak 2383 LUT that's built into DaVinci Resolve. But I found while it was nice and it was giving me a film look, it wasn't exactly the film look that I wanted um, in the end. And I was just kind of fighting against the LUT. So essentially what I have done is I've kind of collected a, a sample of, you know, different looks that I like. So this is just my Google Photos album that I've, I've built over time. That's just a bunch of different movies and photos, mostly movies, obviously. But things that I like the look of visually um, that I, I feel like I want to emulate in terms of color and tone and things like that. So I really suggest kind of finding some things that you really like color wise and, and contrast wise that you can kind of emulate with your um, film LUT. And some of these things aren't even, I mean, this isn't even, this is a drawing, right? And some of these things weren't even shot on film, some of them were digital, but I still kind of like the tones that are coming out of them. And this is kind of what helped me decide on the look that I like personally. I like a slightly more teal uh, balanced look. So what we're gonna do, actually in our color curves, just to, to kind of demonstrate that, is we're gonna pull some of the red out of the shadows here. So we're on the, you know, the curves. And we're going to make sure that the mid tones stay about the same, but we're going to kind of pull this out. And you'll notice, you can see the shadows there are starting to get real teal. And you don't want to go overboard with this necessarily. And then we're also going to go over to blue and bring down the blue just a little bit as well. And then at the same time, I also really like when highlights, um, whites are, are kind of also going orange. So you can see if I go way overboard, that's not the look. But if you know we bring it down just a little bit, it's just kind of warming up our highlights just a tad. And that at its, its core is, is a look that I, you know, really like. Um, and that might be going a little bit overboard now that I'm looking at it again. I'm actually gonna pull it back just a bit. You'll kind of have to experiment with uh, what you like. Um, so you can see it looks a little bit more filmy. And now the final really big main characteristic or at least color characteristic of film is dense saturation. And the way you can actually emulate this in DaVinci Resolve is there's not actually any slider for dense saturation or anything like that. I'll, and I'll actually show you what dense saturation even means. But you kind of have to finagle a little bit to get it. But essentially what, what you do is you're going to go on to, you're going to right click on this node right here. Actually, let's uh, label it real quick. Dense sat. And then you're going to go to color space. And you're going to select HSV. And then what you're going to do, you're going to hit channels, you're going to deselect channel one, and you're going to deselect channel three. And now what you're going to do is you're going to be able to go to your primaries wheels and you can turn your gain up to increase saturation or turn it down to decrease saturation. And you'll notice this isn't doing uh, what regular saturation would do. So if you look at our waveforms, you can actually kind of really see what's going on. Is as I'm increasing saturation, um, luminance is also decreasing. And obviously that's way too much, but if we do it at a more like normal level here, maybe to 1.25 or maybe 1.35 might be good somewhere around there. It's actually making colors a little bit darker. And now if we compare that to a regular saturation, if I just go on this node with this one, you know, disabled and I hit saturation, 
and you can see that's not actually the case anymore. And it's, it's not like it necessarily looks bad to say, but um, it isn't actually decreasing the luminance of colors. Oftentimes it's increasing the luminance. And that is very characteristic of, of a digital capture method. Um, on film, anytime a color was more saturated, it would also inherently be darker just with the way uh, film chemicals work. And it leaves us with something like that, right? Um, a really nice um, kind of natural looking saturation. And then on this LUT, I generally apply a little bit more saturation uh, depending on the look I'm going for. In this case, I'm probably not gonna apply too much because I've already, I'm gonna bring this back a little bit. But I'm not gonna apply too much here, just, just a little bit, just to kind of add a little bit more pop. I do also like a more saturated image, generally speaking. Um, this is obviously really saturated. I might bring that back a little bit later on, but I, I like that kind of peppy saturated film look. And now already you can see this looks much more filmic um, than it did at the beginning. So comparing it to a more video look. So this is say what a traditional video conversion would look like. And then this is our film look. So not a huge difference necessarily, but it definitely kind of adds a, uh, a little bit more of a, a filminess to it. At this point, this is when you can start to kind of finesse things a little bit to your liking. So another thing I like to do is actually the very first node in chain. Um, oh, we gotta reconnect that. I like to add a little bit more split toning. So I'll go into the primaries wheels here and I'll add a little bit more blue to the shadows and then into the highlights, I'll take them a little bit warmer. And I really, it's really probably a good idea to make sure this is kind of a more subtle look. Okay, something along those lines. We're gonna name that. Okay, and then the final thing that I learned recently, actually something we can do here, we're going to label this RGB mixer. And we're going to head to our mixer tools. So what this will essentially allow us to do is if I, if my understanding is correct, is kind of, we'll actually switch tools here so we can really see what's going on. Uh, vector scope um, is will allow us to add more color separation along the kind of the teal orange um, range here. So, and later on, we'll actually look at what that does to skin tone specifically. Um, and we'll probably have to adjust it but we can use this RGB mixer to kind of do a little bit of that. So uh, essentially what we'll do first is we're going to remove some of some blue, maybe let's just say negative, you know, negative 0.1. And then on our blue output, we're going to re remove some red. And obviously that's doing some crazy things, um, going way too green there. But what we can do to adjust for that is we can then take our green output and just kind of adjust it until it looks, you know, natural again. And you can see, if you look at our vector scope, what's going on is it's kind of stretching the signal out in those two directions. So it's bringing the reds, or the, really the skin tones, a little bit more saturated, and it's bringing um, these blues a little bit farther out. And that's, that's really nice, because it'll, it'll add some more kind of filmic, well, traditionally filmic, uh, color separation. And this is kind of the basis of our film look here. Um, it's, you know, you're gonna have to adjust things. What we'll probably do here is we'll actually go to a clip with some skin tones. So this was just me talking to the camera um, in my blog. So we're gonna apply grade here. And okay, you can see we've definitely probably gone too far with saturation, I'd say. It's not unusable. Um, I think it's still, you know, a really interesting look, but it's a little too saturated for, for my taste. So I'm actually gonna come, come to this Dense saturation. Well, we might actually just remove this one. All oh, together, how's that look? Yeah, we're just gonna move, remove this saturation. And again, I'm not an expert. Um, I just have kind of messed around until I've gotten looks that I've that I like here. We're around there. And this clip, uh, I think, needs some adjustments. Well, it's kind of dark. So there's there's another step. And then we're gonna take another clip with some more skin tones. This is under tungsten light, so it'll apply differently. Oh wow, <laughs> very differently. Okay. Um, let's fix that in our raw tab here. Okay, something along those lines, right? And then finally, we'll apply it to this guy right here. Um, and apply, oh, way too dark, too blue, but we'll kind of fix our settings a little bit. And we can see that with some minor adjustments kind of on the clip level, that this does apply pretty well. It's definitely not perfect. I would, I would finagle with it a little bit more just to get it kind of in a better space. Let's see. All right, and just again, to look at some, what, what some of our, our nodes are doing here. So we have our split toning, which is adding a little bit more coolness in the shadows, and a little bit more warmth in the highlights. We have our dense saturation, which is adding, you know, just dense saturation. We have our color space transform. I was kind of nice with it off, actually, <laughs> surprisingly enough. Um, and then we have our creative contrast curve. Um, that is, bring, again, we got an S curve going on, so it's bringing up bringing up the shadows a little bit, bringing down the highlights, and then adding a little bit more contrast. Then we have our RGB mixer, 
which is stretching the signal out across that skin tone line. And then finally we have our color curves, which are tinting the highlights in the shadows. And again, it is up to you to kind of mess with these until you get them to a place that you would like, kind of adjust and then just see, just see what works for you and, and for your style and for what, for what you, you know, like the look of. And then, so now we've created this, right? And say so we wanna make a LUT out of it. We'll go and we'll right click on the clip here and we'll generate LUT. And then you can do a 33 point cube is for maybe if you're putting it on like a monitor, sometimes monitors will only accept 33. But most of the time, in most cases, if you're gonna be using it for editing, just use 65 point cube. And then what that will allow you to do is to, let's just call this uh, test LUT, save. Um, and then what you can do is you'll hit your LUT page right here. And you'll hit reveal and finder, and then you can move the LUT that you just made into this folder. So desktop, okay. And then you can move it in. I've made like a custom folder and you don't have to do this if you don't want to. Um, but I'll just move it right into that custom folder. And then if you hit refresh on this right here, you can then go into your custom. We're just gonna reset this. We're gonna go into the timeline level. And then that is our test LUT applied. If I can apply it, come on now, there we are. And now it works on the timeline based level. So obviously it's gonna be double applying on all these clips. So we're gonna wanna reset these. Um, that's not really a look we want. Um, but then you have a, a LUT that works with, you know, a bunch of, in, a, in a bunch of different scenarios that you can kind of adjust for different things that emulates film, you know, how you like it. And now finally, to address some things that are part of a film look that aren't really applicable in a LUT. So we have um, our halation and grain. So I just use the built-in tools in DaVinci Resolve for these. Halation is essentially those uh, that little red kind of border you're seeing around the lights. Uh, obviously that's a really strong halation right there. Uh, but that is very common for film to kind of exude that characteristic. Anytime there's a really bright highlight, it'll kind of give uh, redness around the highlights. You've seen it probably, especially lately with Cine Still Film, has a really strong halation. Um, but even just regular film, like, you know, maybe a Kodak portrait or something like that would have just a little bit of halation. So you can adjust this to your liking. And then of course, uh, film grain is another thing that you're going to see that, that you can also really just adjust to your to your liking. You can either use um, one of their presets or something like that. That is just a little bit of texture to, you know, whatever you're, whatever you're shooting, some kind of film-like texture. But finally, when you've created this look that you think you want to use um, in general, so what you can actually go do is you hit gallery. Um, you might not have a Power Grades album yet. You should have one built in, but you can, you know, add a Power Grade album and then you can grab a still and then you can name it whatever you want. Uh, let's just say test. And then you should be able to apply it. Say I reset this. Um, you can just apply it to you know any new timeline and this will carry over to new projects. Anything you're doing in DaVinci as long as it's you know the same DaVinci and you can also export this uh, if needs be. But then yeah, you have your own little film lot uh, that you've custom made and that you can use for your own purposes. Well, I hope everyone enjoyed this. Um, I, again, I'm, I'm not, an expert at any of these things. Um, it's just something that I have messed around with for a long time um, that I've enjoyed messing around with and that I've gotten a look that I, I like reasonably well. Um, it's definitely probably not a perfect look yet, but it's something that, you know, I think it's kind of cool. So thanks for watching.